Hi, I'm Renarda Clanton Moy, the Chief Communications Officer of the Cumberland County Schools and your host of Get Connected. During this monthly show, we highlight numerous educational topics that face today's student, educator, and parent in the Cumberland County Schools. Now, this spring, approximately 3,000 500 high school seniors in the Cumberland County Schools are making plans to walk across the stage to receive their high school diplomas. Please know that achieving this accomplishment is no small feat. Numerous graduation requirements have loomed over their heads since day one of their freshman year. Now we'll discuss these requirements and much more on this edition of Get Connected. Morning, Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education, don't you? You know you do. Uh, yeah, but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free, handsome. Oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. Yes. Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, Chief. I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? <coughs> Colleges love extracurricular activities. That just really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us we go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchool.com for more info. We appreciate you joining us for this edition of Get Connected. We're discussing the numerous graduation requirements students are expected to fulfill in order to receive their high school diploma. Now joining us to discuss this timely topic are Dr. Jane Fields, who is Cumberland County Schools Executive Director of Secondary Education, and Mrs. Christy Curran, Cumberland County Schools Counselors Coordinator. Jane, Christy, welcome. Thank you. All right, you know what, I'm gonna just say, you know, I normally call you KC, so is that all right? Yes. Do you mind if I just, Jane? Jane. <laughs> all right, that's great, that's great. Now, um, I understand that we have about 3,500 young people who are planning to walk across the stage, and they would not be able to do this if they had not completed the graduation requirements. Correct. Why do we have these requirements? Um, I would say it's to hold a standard for our students, mm -hmm. um, to have them meet the requirements to help them be able to go on and be productive students if they continue their education, whether it's at the two-year trade skills or community college level, or even further, the four-year bachelor university level to make sure that they've gotten the curriculum that they need to be able to be successful at the next level, the post-secondary level, and that everyone's held to the same standards. standards. Okay. And is this a standard that's across the state, or is this just a local standard? The state requires um, certain core classes um, and then extra elective credits kind of come in depending on the county that, you, that you're in and that kind of. Okay. Now I understand that over the years the, the requirements have changed. You want to talk to us a little bit about that? You want? Go ahead. Okay, so um, <laughs> the state only requires 22 credits. Okay. of North Carolina. However, each district or LEA determines um, if they want to stick with the 22, add additional, that kind of thing. So Cumberland County requires our students to have 28 to graduate. Ah, 28. 28. So we require those six additional elective credits. So I think as I mentioned during the, the um, introduction, from the time a freshman steps in on campus, mm -hmm. boom, they start. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what does freshman year look like, you know, in terms of, you know, your, what you're basically taking and those types of things? Um, so every year they're going to have an English class, a math class, a social studies class, and a science class. Okay. Um, probably science, they only are required to have three to graduate, so senior year they may not take it if they don't need it. Um, and then they will have a health PE class normally their freshman year, the one credit that's required of health and PE, and then any other electives that they can take, whether those are arts electives, foreign language, it could be one of our career and technical education classes, um, ROTC. Yeah, okay. I mean, they, they get to pick it. Um, 
but the big thing is that they get their English courses in because English and credits are how they promote onto the next grade level. So if okay. they may have enough credits, but if they didn't pass their English class, then they won't be able to move on. Okay, okay. And I guess when you mentioned English, you mentioned maybe the math, those are considered the core class Correct. requirements. Correct, yes. Okay, so that's, you have to, okay. And then I have here, um, as far as the elective, the elective courses are concerned, those count toward your Just your graduation credit requirements. Okay, mm -hmm. so wait a minute, credit, okay. Credit requirements? So you graduate two different ways. This is how I like to explain it okay, to parents. Okay, please, please. So you have the core curriculum that the state requires you to graduate. Mm -hmm. So that would be your English one, two, three, and four, your four maths, um, your social studies, uh, world history, American history one and two, and civics. Okay. Um, and then your sciences, your earth science, your physical science, and your biology, and then your health and PE. Those are required to graduate. Then you have your additional elective classes, which would be what we we're just referencing, your arts cor courses, your ROTC, um, your foreign languages, your CTEs, or any other mm -hmm. type of elective that the school may offer mm -hmm. um, that's not part of the core. So with your core curriculum and then electives, they have to get to 28 credits to then graduate. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it okay. does, it does. Now you know what, let me ask you this, Jane, okay. because you're a former principal here in the Cumberland County Schools. You were at? Pine Forest High School. Pine Forest High School, yes. okay. Now, with that in mind, how did, did students embrace the idea of having to, co to complete these requirements? I mean, were they usually like, oh, okay, I can get it done, or did they feel overwhelmed, or you know, what was the reaction? I guess that's what I'm trying I to I think ask. it depended on the student, mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. from the moment they entered high school, the conversation began about the importance of staying on track for graduation. Yeah. Okay. We had constant conversations, whether it's among teachers, definitely the counselors, mm -hmm. as well as the administrative staff about the importance of achieving those 28 credits to graduate. Oh, yeah, that's good. And you know, with that's where, um, Casey, you and, and our counselors, because mm -hmm. you were a counselor there at Westover at one point. Yes, correct? I was the lead counselor at Westover. Yeah, so you all have to have those conversations in order yeah. to. Yeah, and you know, each year our counselors are required to audit their, the transcripts of their entire caseload, so not just our seniors, but our ninth through our 12th graders. Oh, good. And then they actually switch with another person in the department. So each student's transcript is looked at at a minimum four times a year. That's good. Yeah. Just to make sure people are on track. Yeah, and that there aren't any mistakes because, you know, there's human errors. You know, we sometimes we miss things. So just trying mm -hmm. to ensure that our students that are supposed to graduate can graduate. That's good. Now, how do, um, how does rather advanced placement courses, um, honors, co uh, college connections, how does that factor into everything? Um, so I would say it mostly impacts the GPA. Um, they get an ex extra weighted points for those classes. Um, if they came in as a freshman last year, 15-16, they earn an extra half point for honors courses and an extra point for if they came over to FTCC for community college classes or if they took an AP course. Um, our juniors and seniors that came in before 15-16, they're on the old waiting. So they get an extra point for honors and, F and community college courses and they get two points for AP. So not only does it help them in terms of showing that they're, they took rigorous courses and they um, push themselves throughout high mm -hmm. school, so for getting into college and applying for those things and scholarships, but it also helps in terms of boosting that weighted GPA. Oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. That weighted GPA. That weighted GPA. <laughs> you all hear a lot about that, don't you? Yes, yes. we do. Yes. Tell me, what have been your experiences in the past? I mean, I know like even when you're trying to decide who will be the valedictorian and salutatorian, mm -hmm. up to the minute almost. Mm. I think GPA is oftentimes what has driven um, a student's schedule in some cases. Mm -hmm. They sign up for classes that um, are going to get that extra quality point yeah. for, the, mm -hmm. for the weighting on their GPA rather mm -hmm. than necessarily courses that interest them. Yeah. Um, but they, it's a numbers game and you know, the students are very conscientious of their, yes, their grade point averages. Mm -hmm. Especially if they're in that top 10 cluster, they yes. typically know where each person stands and what one extra class might do if they take it over the summer versus another class. They are that focused? Yes, ma'am. I mean, I'm not saying that they're not focused, yes. but you have some that are that driven they need to see and know. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Really? Yes. Especially those that have been in that top one, two, three since their freshman year. Right. Okay. 
it's very competitive. Mm -hmm. It can really? be very competitive. Yes. Wow. Sometimes unhealthily competitive. And like Jane said, you know, they won't take necessarily courses that they want to take because it won't do anything for that GPA. Um, you know, they won't take a CTE class unless it has an honors attached to it. Mm -hmm. So when you have a student like that, or is there a conversation with the parents about, you know, let's kind of, you know, monitor this or, you know, or no? Um, I mean, we try. I mean, that's part of when we are working with them in terms of trying to pick their classes for next year. This when the high school counselors are doing that. We try to have those conversations, but ultimately if they meet the requirements and the prerequisites to get into those classes, we can't stop them, you know, unless it's like so full. Um, you know, there's many students out there that take four AP classes in one semester. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, or in two AP classes and then two college or three college classes at FTCC. So, yeah, I give them a lot of credit for it. I don't think I ever had a course load <laughs> that high in, in, in no high school, let alone college. I mean, they're, yeah, it's, it's impressive. I'm surprised they, a lot of them haven't cracked yet, just in terms of under the stress mm -hmm. and the pressure. Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure um, at this time of the year, you all do encounter young people who are just under tremendous stress. Yes. I mean, of course we see it in college. Yeah. But, you know, I guess, I don't know. I'm trying to think, was I like, maybe I was. I don't know, but I doubt it. Yeah, I, I don't, I mean, I remember being a good student, but I don't remember like focusing so hard on my GPA. Maybe it's because we knew the one girl was gonna be our valedictorian from day one. So it was kind of like we knew no one was gonna beat her. I don't know, but yeah, it is, it's definitely become a, a big deal. Wow. And not just for the students that no, are competing the for the, the GPA uh, to, you know, advance their class rank, but the stressful time for also for students that want to make sure they stay on track, the, yeah. the students mm -hmm. that might be struggling as well. So uh, yeah. it's just, it can be a stressful time of year, yeah. especially yeah. as you're getting closer to that graduation date. And you, walking across that yeah. stage. You all have any advice to give out, to share, you know, with this being this time of the year and trying to prepare for graduations. And I mean, even for that student who may very well be on that borderline and yeah. wondering, well, mm -hmm. will I graduate? Senioritis can be yeah. a terrible thing. That's, That's what exactly what I was going to call it. So that still exists? It still oh, yes. exists. It still exists. But it's just constant communication with counselors, yeah. with parents. They play a significant role in making sure the students stay on track mm -hmm. for the remainder of their senior year. And uh, just, you know, really being vigilant at the school level mm -hmm. to make sure we don't let students fall behind and slip through the cracks. Yeah. Now, you know what? You mentioned senioritis. I hadn't heard that in a long oh, time. But there might big. be some viewers out um, mm -hmm. who are watching who may not know what senioritis is. Tell us, what is senioritis? <laughs> it is the attitude that they like to take pretty much starting October of, um, <laughs> get me out of here, I'm ready to be done. Mm -hmm. um, kind of that lackadaisical nonchalant, mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, I had a homework assignment, but maybe I forgot about it, or <laughs> I just didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but it is definitely, yeah, it is a common word, I'd say, amongst administrators and counselors mm -hmm. in the high schools of, remember, you can't get senioritis yet. You need to, you need to wait and focus. <laughs> yeah, you have to wait a little bit longer. Um, because really now is the crunch time, and I think what a lot of our students don't realize is just because they've been accepted, it's not final until that final transcript gets mailed. Ooh. So any, so a college can say, you know, in December, January, congratulations, you've been accepted, but then senioritis kicks in, they get a D, and now they can say in June, I'm sorry, we don't want you anymore. Yes, like ma'am. Okay, yeah. good to know. <laughs> yes, All yes. Right. Well, look, ladies, we're gonna take a quick break. Don't you get senioritis? We won't. Okay, we'll try not right. to. stay right here with me, and don't go anywhere. Come back for more Get Connected. Imagine. 
read to a child today and spark a lifetime of ambition. Calls me googly eyes. You know you're beautiful, right? You know that? You mean you are beautiful? I got bullied for wearing glasses. Share if you're against bullying. We put it out there, just took off. Three million people have shared this post. Don't let bullies get you down. I stand with you. My yeah. whole family's wearing glasses. Yay. I wear glasses, and I'm proud. I even have the army on my team. All the kind comments brought my child joy. I don't feel thank you is enough. Thanks. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Get Connected. We're talking about graduation requirements in the Cumberland County Schools. And joining me are Dr. Jane Fields, who is Cumberland County Schools Executive Director of Secondary Education, and Mrs. Christy Curran, who is our Counselor's Coordinator. Welcome back, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm glad you didn't get senioritis and just slip out of here. We wouldn't do that to you. No, oh. we tried not to. <laughs> You're so sweet. Okay. Now, in discussing graduation requirements, what happens if a student transfers into our system? How does all of that work? Oh, that is a good question. Mm -hmm. um, so it really depends on where they come from. If they're coming from within the state, um, then we hold them to normally the 28, or I should say within the district, they're still held to the 28. Mm -hmm. um, but if they're not coming from within Cumberland County Schools, we really look at their potential credits that they can earn over their four years. So okay. if they can only earn six years, let's say their ninth grade year, we're not going to hold them to having to have earned that eight as if they were with us. Um, so basically we add all four years, so what they could have earned their freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year, mm -hmm. and then we subtract four, and that's what they need. Just like our students get four years added together and subtract four. So our students really can earn 32 credits when they graduate, but they're only required to have the 28. Mm, okay, all right. And we look at the student on an individual yeah. basis, Renarda, and with us living in a military community, it's mm -hmm. important to uh, make sure the counselors yes. have the training to look at each individual transcript and, and know what to do, whether they come from Georgia, who mm -hmm. might offer half credits. Yeah. Or, so there's a lot of training for the counselors that go into analyzing the transcripts to make sure the students get what they need for a smooth transition. Okay, and that's, that's a really good point. With, with us being in a military, we um, follow the military interstate compact. So if a senior moves in and was able to graduate in their school mm -hmm. in their state but doesn't meet our requirements, we do everything we can to make sure that they still graduate, even if that means sending them back to graduate at their school, their old school in their old state at the end of the year. Okay, okay. You know, it's something, and this is just kind of off the track to some degree, but I've heard, oh, you know how I am, <laughs> you all know how I am, but um, I've heard that parents telling their young people when they're about to enter high school, come on, get in mind what you want to, you know, get in mm -hmm. mind what you mm -hmm. want to do, and I get that as far as your career, but, I mean, do you all look for students to be, like, very focused on the path in high school? Um, I mean, they change so often, so we like to look at their interests and make sure that, you know, if we know they want to be doctors or um, somewhere in the health services field to make sure they try to get chemistry. Okay, got it. Um, a lot of times we try to look at really where they think they want to go, um, but still keep it somewhat broad so that way they don't box themselves in and then change their minds. You would be, you would not be surprised how many change their minds even their senior year. I did. Yeah. yeah. And I have really? a daughter going into ninth grade, and we just got her registration form. Mm -hmm. And I've looked at thousands, literally, in my 20 plus years mm -hmm. in Cumberland County Schools and helped students do. And I looked at my own child's and drew a blank. I had to call Christy and say, okay, are we signing up for the right things? <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh -huh. This is my baby. Yes, yeah. that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's good. That's yeah. good. That's all right. Now, um, what are the options for students who might not get all the requirements they need to graduate? Or what are their options? We do have uh, summer school options. Mm -hmm. okay. um, we have a partnership with FTCC for a face-to-face -face summer school. Yeah. And we also have, uh, we utilize an online learning platform for credit recovery. 
So students who may fall behind and not achieve a credit in a particular class um, have the opportunity to retake it um, and learn at their own pace through a, our credit recovery platform called GradPoint. So each high school has a grad point facilitator um, that works with these students to help ensure that they get back on track. Yeah. And then there's the North Carolina Virtual Public School System as well that sometimes they can get initial credits with, um, if, even if it's just an elective after school or over the summer, that maybe they can't get through grad point or through mm -hmm. FTCC summer school program. And we do have uh, summer graduations, correct? Yes, yes, we do. That's good. Mm -hmm. Do we have a December grad, or am I thinking no, the college? We don't. Okay, I'm thinking just, just college. college. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Now, what is um, the new way our school system is recognizing academic achievement? Uh, just this past year, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Till asked um, Christy and I to do some research on the Latin honor system and you've probably heard of it. Okay. Um, it's what most colleges and universities mm -hmm. utilize to yep. distinguish academic achievements um, in their school settings and so we did some research and found that there are a good many um, districts within our own mm -hmm. state as well as many states across the country that are moving towards um, recognizing students within this Latin honors uh, system. Now, when you say Latin Honor System, explain mm -hmm. to our viewers what, you're, what you mean exactly. Uh, the Latin Honor System, you've probably heard, summa cum laude. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to recognize graduates that have a 4.25 GPA or, or greater, yeah. um, magna cum laude, which is the 4.0 to the 4.249. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And then the um, cum laude, which is the 3.75 to the 3.99 GPA. Yeah. Um, this was done in an effort to, you know, we talked about the valedictorian and mm -hmm. salutatorian. Those are typically just two students yeah. that get recognized. And so in order to really um, magnify the accomplishments of our young people and let, let them feel distinguished and that their hard work has paid off, we decided to adopt uh, this system. And just to give you an example, if we had implemented the Latin Honor System last year, mm -hmm. uh, the class of 2016 approximately, I think it was 25% yeah. of our students would have received recognition. this recognition on their graduation oh, okay. day. So we're excited to put this in place. Uh, for, for this upcoming uh, graduation year yeah. and see just how many students will, will achieve that success on, on graduation day. And it, it will be going off the, um, the weighted GPA, but because it's mm -hmm. you know a 3.75, it's still doable. So they right. can still go out and try some of those classes that maybe wouldn't get them the extra weighted points um, that they would need to be one or two. They still have that ability, and that's kind of another reason why we looked at it is encouraging them to be able to go into the fields they're really interested in versus worrying about just what that GPA number is going to be. Right, yeah, that and, makes a lot of sense. And the research shows that most of our universities are not even looking at class rank mm -mm. anymore. They're not putting the emphasis on rank. They're putting emphasis on the rigor of the coursework and yep. your grades in those college uh, preparatory classes. Yeah. You know, Duke University, um, I think there was some research University that stated, and uh, the University of Pennsylvania, both of them, um, I think it was like 56% of the mm -hmm. um, valedictorians that applied to Duke in 2014 didn't get accepted. Mm -mm. They're not looking at titles, they're looking at you know accomplishments mm -hmm. and the well-roundedness of young people and how rigorous their coursework was uh, throughout their high school years. Yeah. Were they so, willing to challenge themselves? Mm -hmm. Were they willing to like she said, become well-rounded, be exposed to multiple areas. Um, and I think part of that is because, you know, one's valedictorian class could be significantly different than another valedictorian right. in a class. You know, if you're in a class of 20 versus a class of 500, that looks very oh, yeah. different. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of hard to say, you know, that it's the same kind of thing versus looking mm -hmm. at the classes they've actually taken and mm -hmm. challenged themselves with. That's good. I, I, that, it's good to be able to get more understanding because mm -hmm. at one point I was wondering, okay, what are the advantages of this? But mm -hmm. that does help the child, I would think, focus more on doing more of what you want to do, mm -hmm. do it you know, well yeah. and be rigorous about it as opposed to just working toward this, getting this particular GPA. Right. Yes. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Trying to build a more well-rounded young person. Yeah. Um, now, as far as around the, the country, are there mm -hmm. other states that are 
oh, have embraced yeah. the Latin honor system? Quite a few. Um, yeah. I know California, Illinois, uh, around us, the Virginia, Maryland, South Carolina. Pennsylvania, I think, had it. Yes. Maybe Ohio, too, maybe. We How have about North Carolina? Um, there are several districts throughout mm -hmm. our state. Um, Wake County just implemented a couple of years ago, Durham, yeah. yep. New Hanover, and many of the districts in the western nice. portion of the state. So. Mm -hmm. It's okay. starting to really spread. spread. Yes. yes, and it's been interesting to see those that have dropped the valedictorian, salutatorian altogether, and those are, that are still keeping it as an option. Yeah, so for us, we're not dropping no, it. No, we're not no. dropping it. Okay, yeah. all right, that's good. Yeah. But we mm -hmm. do have some schools that are, last year and years prior yes. had embraced yeah. the Latin honor system, mm -hmm. correct? Yes, Cumberland, Cumberland International Early College. Mm -hmm. um, I think that was just natural for them being on the campus of a, a university yeah. to do that. And Massey Hill and Grace Creek as well already implemented the Latin honor system. That's and good. that was something we actually, in our research, kind of found out. That was probably one of the first places that Jane mm -hmm. went to look was, okay, which programs are already doing this? How mm -hmm. are they utilizing it? That's good, mm -hmm. that's good. Now. Um, that's what I was going to ask you, and I have this down here. What do you think is the reason for this growing trend of us moving in that direction, of, of education moving in that direction? I think it's because we're very student-centered. Mm -hmm. We want our students to be recognized for their hard work and their achievements and not feel like they've been defeated if they don't receive that, that select uh, label of valedictorian or salutatorian and like Christy said and I mentioned previously it gears students towards doing things that are going to interest them mm -hmm. and better prepare them for their career path rather than preparing their yeah. GPA to possibly win one of those two spots. Yeah. Okay. I think the other thing is also the healthy trying to make it a healthier learning environment um, we talked about that top 10 knowing everything I mean memorize everybody's GPA um, hopefully cutting down on some of that unhealthy competition that they create within themselves to the point of trying to trick someone into taking one class instead of another class so that, that way they can't, you know, be higher than them. Um, really trying to get them to work together as students rather than against each other over one single spot in their class. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right, ladies. Well, you know what? I'm looking at the clock on the wall, and it's saying our time is up, okay? okay. So, but thank you all for joining us. Thank you for thank having me. Thank you for having so, us, yeah. I'll have you back next year. Sure. <laughs> Anything for Love you. Love to. <laughs> thank you, Jane. We can come up with lots of topics to come up with. <laughs> all right. Well, on behalf of the Cumberland County School System, we want to thank you for tuning in to this edition of our show and for giving us a chance to help you get connected. Until next time.